you know, now, now this time it's going to be a little different and I'll talk about that because they've already laid out how they're going to do it. First of all, you have to understand that by the time that happens, people have been battered and bruised and bloodied by the inflation, right? And so they're, they're at that point willing to accept anything that the government comes up with. And typically they will do an overnight reset on average three times before, I don't know why it takes people that long to realize that it doesn't matter what they do, it's not gonna work because they don't change behavior, but it seems to take three times on average. But frequently and mostly it's a thousand to one. So if you happen to have a thousand dollars in the bank, you wake up the next morning and you have one. So you really have no choice but they do it against gold. So in Venezuela, which is now as of this month on their third lopping off of the zeros, the currency losing 99.5% of its value, as well as their stock market losing 99% of its value, mm -hmm. uh, the trillion times zero is still zero. Then they usually give you a certain period of time if you have cash out of the system to convert it into the new currency because the old currency is then declared, you know, no good anymore. It's demonetized. So you right. can't use it for anything. Whereas with gold, it, because it's used across every, it's used in every single area of the global economy and silver too, right? There's always demand for it in whatever currency it happens to be. But once they do, they will also put typically a timestamp in there. So if you look at Zimbabwe, they're the first time that then they did it three times as well. And they're, they're in their third iteration now. But then there's lots of stories about Zimbabwe. But, um, you know, when they issue bills, it says this bill is good until June, whatever, about a year later. The next iteration was only 11 months and the third iteration was of the currency was only good for 10 months. And they lop off the zeros so it looks like, hey, if you were buying this loaf for $80,000, now you're just buying it for $8,000. But it took $80,000 to buy that eight. So, you know, you're definitely not better off when they lop off those zeros. In fact, you are typically even worse off. They don't change behavior. So you have it go up to those zeros again. Now, this is what they've done, Marjorie. Every single person on this planet, whether you realize it or not, last October was given a FedNow account. Even people in rural areas through the post office or if you have credit unions, as well as the regular banks. And so what they will do, uh, this is what I think they'll do, um, because that's how they're gonna distribute these digital, these CBDCs, uh, is they will simply, will, they'll take us on to universal basic income, which they've already started evolving to, um, which means that everybody will get the same thing, whether I make lots of money and you don't, doesn't matter. I'm going to get the same thing that you're going to get, universal basic income. They've started toward that with the child care tax credits already in this country. And they will simply make that deposit into your account. And then you can go and you can just spend those digital dollars. But they may, as we've seen in China, limit where you can spend them. And also they have a timestamp on them. If you do not spend them by this amount of time, boop, they go away. So that's how they're gonna do it. First, they're gonna do it through universal basic income so nobody complains because, hey, I'm giving this money every month, right? I can, I can go out and I can shop with it. They want you to have confidence that you're gonna have that income so you go and spend it and stimulate the economy. And once they get us used to that, because we will be, that will not be the change. That will not be the reset that people are looking for. That'll just be a mechanism to usher in the hyperinflation. But that's how they're going to do it. 
remember they want to keep it as close to what we're used to so they keep the name because that's yep. all it is it's just the name so the the fed is planning on having their cbdc come out in 2023 but also the biggest thing is the interest rate benchmark the libor that uh -huh. was created in the 80s that is a stated rate what a bank might charge another bank for overnight and uh -huh. it was discovered shocker that it was being manipulated in 2008 i mean shocker uh -huh. so in 2012 you know they said well okay because because now everybody knows that it's manipulated we have to get rid of it and so there's about six and a half trillion notional contracts that have this interest rate embedded in them that must be converted to a new benchmark, which several central banks have worked furiously on creating and also have been trying to create a market with it. Uh -huh. But frankly, they have not been having very good luck making that transition because that was actually supposed to go away this year. They tested it with 80 trillion in last October, so almost a year ago, and you went dead silent. And then about three weeks after the test, they came out with postponing it until 2023. Wow. So the test didn't go very well. <laughs> but, but we don't know that. And so I don't think they're going to be able to make the transition. I mean, it's a big experiment. It's never been done before. And that's probably the biggest part of it because every contract has to be restructured to reflect one of the new benchmarks that the different central banks have come up with. And it's just not happening. Um, since the current system is based on debt, money's created from debt. In order to get what the true value is, and I'm not gonna get you to the penny, but I'll get you someplace close. You take all the debt that's been created in the world, because this is indeed a global issue, and that is a proxy for all the money that has been created. And you divide that by all the gold that exists in the world, whether it's above ground or in ground, because there is a finite amount of it. And then that gets you to somewhere near what the current fundamental value of an ounce of gold is. Ah. We just did that calculation last Wednesday. Okay. And an, a physical ounce of gold is, if they were to do the reset today, would be somewhere near $35,000 an ounce. So at $1,800 an ounce, it's a huge bargain. Silver came out to roughly $550 an ounce. 